Well, every once in a while, people will use these cute little memory methods to remember a set of items. It kind of aids in memory. Like, for instance, music students will use every good boy does fine for remembering the notes E, G, B, D, and F. Or they'll use face to remember F, A, C, and E. So, how many of us have ever done this one when you're trying to figure out how many days are in a given month? 30 days in September, April, June, and November. All the rest have 31, except February, which has 28, and leap year has 29. So we can use these little things. Even uh, when I first met Beverly, she showed me one that made it real easy to remember Philippians 4.8. And it went like this. Whatever is true, honorable, just, pure, lovely, commendable, excellent, worthy of praise, practice them and the God of peace will be with you. Philippians 4.8. I thought that was pretty cool. Well, today, I'm fixed to give you a set of disciplines or activities that we should be involved in in growing a vibrant daily walk with God. And they are by no means all the disciplines that we should be involved in to help us grow, but if we cultivate them in our daily lives, we will definitely grow in our walk and I'm going to use a method similar to the ones that we just mentioned. And each one will correspond with a different day of the week. In your bulletins, you will find a handout that lists the days of the week with the first letter and a blank. And we're going to fill in those blanks and go through the days of the week that will correspond with a different thing that will be enhancing your Christian life. And the key is not to let these things go by the wayside. So let's walk through the week together, shall we? On the back of the handout lists the majority of the scripture verses we'll be talking about this morning. So grab your handout, get a pen, and let's begin. So if you've got Monday, what do you suppose fills in the blank for Monday. No, it, I'm not going to sing Just Another Manic Monday. <laughs> no. This stands for Memorize Monday. See, we need to memorize key parts of the Bible. And I know some of you are thinking, oh, I can't memorize Bible verses. I've tried and I've tried and i tr tried, but I can't retain those. That's too much to handle, and it overloads my brain. But if you think about it, everyone can memorize Scripture. Let me show you how. First of all, how many of you know James 1, 5? If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. Gee, you remember that one, don't you? Or how about John 3, 16, when you're sharing the gospel? Now, when I say John 3, 16, what happens? your mind starts to say, oh, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Well, guess what? You know that verse. How about Proverbs 3, 5 to 6? Trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. And I can see Teddy following right along. Not to mention the Lord's Prayer. We all know that. See, the reason you remember those is because you can memorize Scripture. And whenever you memorize a scripture that deals with any given subject, when you need it, the Holy Spirit will call it to mind so you can use it. The word of God is your weapon. And he will bring it to mind whenever you need it as long as you tuck it away in here. That's why David said in Psalm 119, I will store up or hide your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. It's like squirrels who collect acorns and other nuts and hide them in their little hiding place so that when they need it, they can go back in and get them and have a little thing to eat. Now, that's not to mention even the many, many promises in Scripture 
that we can learn and memorize and cling to. So do you still think, I can't memorize scripture? Well, if so, consider this. At Men's Alliance, we men are put through a rugged workout every week. After that, we have a devotion and honest sharing time around a fire. And part of being in a men's alliance involves a monthly memory verse. And if you're not careful, if you're unable to recite the verse, as well as some other things, it could result in being punished by having to do an extra set of exercises. So let me tell you, the guys have shown time after time that you can memorize scripture. And if you still don't think you can memorize scripture, at least realize this. A young believer was discouraged in his attempts to read and memorize scripture. He said, Pastor, it's no use. No matter how hard I try and how much I read, I just can't retain and remember it. The pastor replied, Take heart, young man. Whenever you pour water over a spaghetti strainer, no matter how much water you pour, you don't really collect much, but at least you have a clean strainer. So read your Bibles. Keep reading your Bibles. Even if you can't, just can't memorize at least you will have a clean heart and mind. So how about Tuesday? What are we going to use for Tuesday? No, Mark, it is not Taco Tuesday. Taco Tuesday was a big thing in Arizona, especially with all the very authentic Mexican restaurants, but we're not going to go there. No, it is Talking Tuesday. And by this, I mean prayer. Prayer is simply talking with God. It's a conversation. But a word of caution, when you are praying, don't just do all the talking. Don't talk and talk and talk and talk. What do you call it if only one person in a conversation is doing all the talking? It's a monologue. What you want is a dialogue. And God will speak to you through Scripture mostly, but He'll speak to you through your circumstances. He'll speak to you through your spouse. He can speak in many ways, but the key is to listen and let Him speak to you. Now, the Bible tells us in 1 Thessalonians 5.17 to pray without ceasing. And that just simply means to be conscious at all times that God is with you and that you can use every moment of every day to speak to him as if he's right there beside you. Because guess what? He is. Charles Spurgeon, and I love this, had this to say about prayer. Prayer pulls the rope down below and the great bell rings above in the ears of God. Some scarcely stir the bell, for they pray so weakly. Ding, ding. Others give only an occasional jerk at the rope. Ding. But he who communicates with heaven is the man who grasps the rope boldly and pulls continuously with all of his might. Let's pray like that. And if you have trouble getting organized, in prayer, and you think, I don't even know how to start. Well, consider using one of the many good little methods that you can use to stay organized. And I'll give you an example. Many find it convenient to pray after the example of the Lord's Prayer. Jesus gave us an example to use the types of prayers we should pray, like our Father who art in heaven. Well, that's just addressing him for who he is. Hallowed be thy name. That's acknowledging his glory and majesty that he's a totally apart from us thy kingdom come asking him to bring about his kingdom the kingdom of heaven thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven that's asking him that to, to do his will and to overrule the will of man give us this day our daily bread that's asking him to provide your daily needs whether it's food or boldness 
or protection or comfort or hope and whatever it is that you need you can ask him for you can pray your way through the lord's prayer that way another simple way to stay organized in prayer is by using the acts prayer prompt a c t s adoration for a praising him for who he is for his goodness and his mercy mercy and anything else that comes to mind then there's c confession asking the holy spirit to bring to mind any sins that you have committed and then confessing them clear the slate and then thanksgiving t expressing thankfulness for all the good things that he has provided and let me tell you that list never ends and then s supplication praying for the needs of people you know and let me tell you we know there's always needs out there that we can be praying for now let me give you one more little example of a way you can be organized it's called praying the scriptures have you ever, anybody ever done that okay and an example would be you can pray through Psalm 23 line by line you read the Lord is my shepherd and you pray and say oh Jesus thank you for being my shepherd well the one that guides me and leads me and protects me and keeps me safe through life not to mention that you are the good shepherd that you do good you don't trick me you lead me into truth and on and on until you get through that line then go to the next one I shall not want oh thank you father for providing all of my needs you've provided everything I need for life and godliness you can pray your way through that whole psalm or actually any part of scripture that you want because you will never literally never run out of things to pray about and you'll likely find in the end that you're praying more than you ever have but the bottom line of it all is just to pray as Leonard Ravenhill said a worldly Christian will stop praying and a praying Christian will stop being worldly. Now we move on to Wednesday. This is what we're going to call Witness Wednesday. How often do you share your faith with others? It's eye-opening to realize that there are literally hundreds and thousands of people close to us. We're neighbors, co-workers, cashiers, grocery store workers, mailmen, on and on, all who need to hear about the only hope they have of escaping the anger and the wrath of God. And they pass by us every day. How often do we take the time to say something to warn them of the coming judgment? Now, I'm not just pointing fingers out there at you. I'm pointing them at myself as well. We have a great commission in Matthew 28. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. That's not just a cool suggestion or a good idea. That's a command. 1 Peter 3.15 says, Always be prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for the reason for the hope that is in you. Now I know someone's going to say, I can't witness. I'm terrified at that. I don't have any skill to share the gospel. I'm not an evangelist. Well, you have a testimony. Each of us can share what God has done in our lives to take us from the kingdom of darkness into being a follower of Jesus. Psalm 66, 16 says, Come and hear all you who fear God, and I will tell you what he has done for my soul. Okay, I admit that it can be intimidating to share the gospel, especially with people we don't know. It's hard to overcome the fear of speaking with someone about the gospel, but look at it this way. Imagine walking down the sidewalk and glancing up to see a large group of people in the top floor of a building having a meeting. And imagine noticing that down below the building is on fire. 
I'd be willing to bet that you would run in that building and start yelling at the top of your lungs to get out the buildings on fire. Why? Because you know if you don't, all those people are going to perish. Well, the building is on fire. And the flames are getting closer every single moment to the people around us. People are not going to come to you to hear about the gospel. They don't think anything's wrong. You have to go to them. When automaker Henry Ford took out a very large, expensive insurance policy, it was front page news in the Detroit newspaper. One of his old friends who happened to be in, insu in the insurance business went to him and decided to ask him if that was true. And of course, Mr. Ford assured him, yeah, it was true. And since that man was an old personal friend for many years, he finally asked him, why didn't you buy the insurance from me? And Ford's reply was simple. You never asked me. How many of our friends and family and neighbors will stand before God judged and look at us and say, you never asked me? How can any of us who believe in hell and God's offer of mercy, how can any of us walk past an unbeliever and not be horrified at their fate? We need to share our faith. But even more than that, the people around us need us to. Moving on to Thursday. This is Thankful Thursday. Philippians 4, 6 tells us, do not be anxious about anything, but in, in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Now, notice that it tells us to be thankful in everything, not for everything. It would be pretty silly for us to say, thank you for the recent cancer diagnosis, or... I'm so thankful for the car crash that crushed both of my legs. No, but we can be thankful in spite of these things because we have so much to be thankful for. Our homes, our families, our church, the promise of heaven, the invitation to pray and communicate with Almighty God. Ice cream, Love, sunshine, the smell of coffee. And notice I said smell and not taste. There's literally a never-ending list of things to be thankful for. Even the great Bible commentator and scholar, Matthew Henry, after he was robbed, said this, Let me be thankful. First, because I've never been robbed before. Second, because although they took my wallet, they did not take my life. Third, because although they took everything I have, it wasn't much. And fourth, because it was I who, ro uh, who was robbed, not I who robbed another. Anytime things are going bad, and let me tell you, things can sometimes go really, really bad. Think about the things to be thankful for instead of focusing on the things that are going bad. Take the time to start thanking God for each of these things that come to mind. And I bet you that you will find that your heart will become lighter and your burdens will lift. Oh, the problems will still be there, believe me. But with thankfulness, your perspective on the problems will change. And moving on to Friday. We're going to call this one Fellowship Friday. Back in World War II, Germany actually conducted experiments to identify the most effective way to elicit information from prisoners. They found that solitary confinement was the most effective way. After just a few days of being in total solitary confinement, most men would be 
happy to tell the enemy everything they want to hear. That's why we need fellowship. Without it, we too become isolated and are tempted to completely abandon our values. Incidentally, that is why Scripture says that Satan is like a lion roaming to and fro, finding someone to devour, because that's what lions do. Lions isolate the ones that they find to be the weakest in the herd so that they become even easier prey. But, like the old saying says, there are strength in numbers. 1 Thessalonians 5.11 says to encourage one another and build one another up. Now, right here in our church, we have a whole bunch of opportunities and avenues to get involved in fellowship. There's something for everybody. Not many of us have a real good excuse to avoid fellowship. You can find some avenue of fellowship that will help you grow in community. And I'm just going to name a few of them. Scarlett Miller has a Bible study on Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m. right here in the church. Feel free to ask Scarlett about that study. She would be happy to tell you, and I'm sure she's got plenty of room for more. Saturday mornings at 8.30, there's men's ministry over at The Gap. We gather and study and discuss how to be men of God and how to be the leaders that God intends us to be. At the same time, right downstairs at the Fellowship Hall, 8.30 on Saturdays, is women's ministry. They meet and discuss what it means to be a woman of faith, as well as strengthening their walk with God by leaning on each other for support and encouragement. Then there's Men's Alliance. We meet Mondays at 7 p.m. at The Gap. As I mentioned earlier, we have a half hour of rugged workout followed by a half hour of devotions and discussion around the fire. It's men being men for God. And ladies, there is such thing as a uh, women's alliance. They would love to start a tribe here in our area. And if you're a workout woman who has a desire to grow in the faith with other ladies, come and see me and I'll connect you with somebody who can answer all the questions you have and how it, the alliance works. And who knows? Maybe you can be the one to start the movement. Then there's the text forum, the group text for the youth group. The youth and I are able to share prayer requests and humor and encouragement and announcements with each other. So keep it up, youth. We have fellowship at our fingertips men's alliance also has a forum it's an app for your phone that you can keep in touch with other men and what's going on in your spiritual life your growth as well as your struggles there's even a text group text forum for the men's ministry we share and we encourage and we announce men if you want to be added to that let me know I'll add you to that We'd also love to see new small groups start up here at the church. If you feel God is calling you to start one, let me or Pastor Mark know and we can get you going. Same thing if you'd like to start an additional Bible study for Sunday school. It's our hope that through any one of these opportunities that most of those who call Otterbein home will be involved in fellowship activities because fellowship is important. Next, we move on to Saturday. We're going to call that Study Saturday. 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Be diligent to present yourself approved to God as a workman who does not need to be ashamed, accurately handling the word of truth. And in order to master the Bible and handle it correctly, you have to study it. Reading the Bible is how we find out what it says, and studying is it, it is how we find out what it means. And just like any subject in school, in order to master the subject matter and get an A, you have to study the subject. Colossians 3.16 says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Well, that comes by studying. 
There's so many good tools that we can use to dig deeper into our Bibles. We have Bible dictionaries that'll help us find what specific words mean more precisely. There's commentaries that clear up questions that we might have that keep us from understanding what it's saying. I like what Martin Luther said. He said, I searched the Bible as a whole, like shaking the whole tree. Then I shake every limb, study book by book after book. Then I shake every branch, giving attention to the chapters. Then I shake every twig, or a careful study of the paragraphs and sentences and words and their meanings. Then I look under every leaf. See, the key is to dig. The key is to overturn the sentences and the words and look for the gold. You can read parallel passages that relate to the one that you're reading. Ask questions about the passage that you're reading. Why is this being said? Who is this talking about? A simple cursory reading of Scripture and just checking it off your list does not cut it. And I know most of us don't see ourselves as scholars, but at the very least, read your Bible prayerfully and often. As you read, ask God to help you understand and apply what you're reading. Open your Bible and read, read, read. All of us are broken because of sin. And the best way to keep a broken cup full of water is by keeping the faucet turned on. Just by all means, read your Bible. Many years ago, a devoted father, whose son was studying to go into the ministry, took his son aside. The son was about to go for his seminary degree to a liberal, modern seminary in Europe. And his father was concerned that his son's simple faith would be ruined by sophisticated, unbelieving professors. Don't let them take Jonah away from you, he warned. Because he figured that the story of, of being swallowed by a great big fish would probably be one of the first things in the Bible to go. Two years later, when his son returned home, the father asked, Do you still have Jonah in your Bible? The son laughed, Ha, Jonah, yeah. That story isn't even in your Bible. The father said, it most certainly is. What are you talking about? Again, the son laughed. Ha, it's not in your Bible. Go get it. Show me. So the father thumbed through his Bible, and sure enough, he could not find the book of Jonah. He looked in the table of contents. And when he found the page number for Jonah, and he turned there, he saw that the pages of the book of Jonah had been carefully cut out of his Bible. Well, I did it before I went away, said the son. What's the difference whether I lose it through studying under non-believers or you lose it through neglect? Please do not lose what you have freely available through neglect. As Timothy Keller once said, if Jesus didn't think he could handle life without knowing the scriptures inside and out, what makes you think you can? we we'll move on to Sunday. This is the final one. Sunday. This one is really simple. Just show up. Hebrews 10, 24, and 25 says, Let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds, not forsaking our own assembling together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another all the more as you see the day drawing near. COVID really messed up the momentum for a lot of churches. I don't even know of a whole lot of churches that are back to the same level of attendance that they had before COVID. And I think part of it is that many people have just found it easier and more convenient to simply sit back and watch the services streamlined from the comfort of their own homes. Now, every one of you here, I pat you on the back for being here in person. 
and all of you watching online, I challenge you to get back into assembling with the people of God in person. That's where you're going to get your fellowship. That's where you're going to get your teaching. That's where you're going to get your encouragement, your advice, and all of those other things we just talked about. Years ago, the pastor of a church that the President of the United States would occasionally attend got a phone call from someone asking if the President was going to be attending that Sunday. I don't know, said the minister, but I do know that God will be there. Shouldn't that be enough? The greatest reason to be here in person Sunday mornings is because God is here. Shouldn't that be enough? Let me close with this thought. We just walk through the days of the week. Now, I'm not saying that Monday's the day that you should memorize the Bible and that Tuesdays are the day you should pray and that you should witness only on Wednesdays, etc., you can do all of these things every day. What I am saying is that Peter said, if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Put simply, if you put the things we just talked about into practice, you will grow in those areas. You'll grow in your walk with God and it will grow deeper and you will become more effective in the work that God has to, for you to do don't neglect these things and let's walk through the week with God closer than ever before let's pray thank you Father for this opportunity to be with your people to share what's on your heart through these faulting words and I ask now that um, we would all consider consider whether we're following you closely or whether we've slipped away through other pursuits like television and football games and newspapers and, and whatever help us to know that that's not what life is about. That we were made for so much more. Help us to grow and to walk closer with you. 